Hello there, I'm Jan from JB Crafts and I'm back today with my next tutorial. So I have sort of a little mini series that I'm going to do over the next few weeks and this is all about colour theory. Uh, something that I used to get asked about an awful lot when I was at Crafters TV but didn't always have the time to address it. So I figured that now I had my own channel here at YouTube, it would be a good time to actually do some work on that colour theory. So it's not anything to be scared of. I'm going to try and keep it fairly simple, but it's basically about um, the science of using colour and bringing it into your crafting and how to sort of use colour and put colours together and things like that. So we are going to keep it fairly simple to start off with. I'm not going to go into anything in great detail. And I just want to talk about uh, the colour wheel for a little bit. Um, I brought my project in here. I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, but I have my colour wheel here, which I tend to use alongside this kind of thing. And colour mainly falls into two brackets. You could either say that you could use colours that contrast with each other. And they tend to be opposites on the colour wheel. So, for example, the red and the green. And a really good example of this is things at Christmas. It's quite a popular colour theme for Christmas with the red, the green, maybe the added gold in there. So you've got that nice contrast. So very different colours, nothing similar about them at all. And then you've actually got sort of the harmony side of colour, um, which is the sort of more friendly colours that go together. There's a lightness between them. So they usually sit next to each other on the colour wheel. So if we look at these three sections at the top here, you've got the red. I just move that along here. You've got orange and you've got the violet shades, which are all adjacent to each other on the wheel. And they all sort of go very, very nicely with each other. Nice tonal colours and you get that nice harmony between them there. So the colour wheel is normally split into two halves. If I put my ruler across here, you can see that we've got one side we tend to refer to as warm tones with the reds and the yellows, the oranges in there. And then at this side with the greens, the blues and the violets, we've got more of a cool colour palette. And again, we'll talk about that as we go on through the um, the series of videos. What I want to focus on today are primary colours. So that's going to be the first one in our little series of videos. So the three primary colours are sort of the basic colours. These are actually pure colours that can't be mixed by using any other colours. And you've got the red, the yellow and the blue. So a little bit of a triangle going here on the wheel. And those are sort of the building bricks, the foundation for all the other colours. So the secondary colours are mixed from those and we'll come on to those in another video, along with several others on that colour wheel. So we're just going to concentrate today on the red, the yellow and the blue, which is where my design came in here using those colours. And I've just made something very, very simple. I didn't want to spend a massive amount of time on the projects because I wanted to bring in that theory aspect of it with the colour. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what I've done is I've just created a simple design on a five by seven card and I've chosen to put my three primary colours there in the background using just some little apertures and die cuts to create a pretty little uh, design on the front there. So I'm just going to pop my colour wheel to one side for a second and show you the products that I use to make this particular one. And you won't be surprised that it's the oxide inks there again. Uh, my favourite inks, my go to for most of my colouring. And I actually use these alongside with my little colour swatch chart, which I think I showed you the other day. If you watch the video uh, that I brought out the other day and I have Lou Collins to thank for this. I must admit, I was watching her channel <coughs> and saw this on her channel and she has it available as a download, which I did. And then I've just tweaked it slightly to suit my needs. But I've basically got all the colours of my um, Distress Oxide ink swatched out here so that I can literally see what they look like on my cardstock. You can see there, there are one or two missing. I'm still working on those new colours that have been brought out recently. But if I bring my colour wheel back in and if we go in here to the red section, all I did was actually bring this along here with the red and had a look through my red inks and decided which one I thought was the best option. And I came up with the candied apple there, which is the one that I've used here. 
I then did exactly the same with the yellows and came over to the brighter yellows here. And it's not a perfect match, but it was the best match I had in my colours for my inks. And that was the squeeze lemonade for my yellow. So that's what we have along here. And then I did the same again with those blues, those true blue colours. And on the wheel here, I came down to those blue areas and decided that the prize ribbon was a good match for the blue there on my colour chart. So that's how I arrived at mine. But there's nothing to say that you couldn't do a variation on this. You know, you could have a more orangey red. You could have a more orangey yellow. You could have a more of a green blue. Lots of different ways that we'll talk about as this series progresses. But those were the three that I chose. And I used my brushes, my blending brushes, to pop this in the background. And did a little bit of water spritz on there just to get that reaction with them. And that's how I achieved it. So I'm going to redo the card today, but I'm going to change my inks and I'm going to bring in the distress inks rather than the oxide. So excuse the little mini. I have got most of the colours in the dress, distress inks, but not all the large size pads because I was just getting uh, restricted for space and these are easier to store. So I've got the same candied apple. I've got squeeze lemonade. I didn't have prize ribbon, which is one of the newer colours in the ink. So I've just swapped it out for blueprint sketch, which is a little bit more vibrant, but will do the job. So I'm going to put those distress oxides away to one side. I've actually brought in my... Uh, blending tools for this purpose today I'm actually going to use three blending tools with the little sponges on the end to apply the ink so we'll come back to those in a second so I'm just going to pop those down for a minute and what I'm going to do is bring in the pieces that we need for the card to get us started and then we'll do a little bit of ink blending in a second so what I've got then is a seven by five card blank all right, I didn't actually put the sizes. Let me pop these down in case any of you are wanting to do the uh, the screenshots there. So seven by five inches for my card, seven inches tall, five inches wide. That's going to be the, uh, the background piece. Then I've got a piece of beautiful Centura Pearl here, and this is the Anthracite Grey. And I've cut this just a half an inch smaller. So this one is six and a half by four and a half inches. And that's going to be my matte layer. I didn't want to go right down to black today. I just felt that the grey was a little bit softer with those nice oxide inks. And then my top panel, I've just come down a quarter of an inch. So this one is actually um, six and one quarter by four and one quarter there. And then I've actually done a little bit of work on this one, which I'll explain what I've done. So I'm going to pop the card pieces to one side for a minute. And we're actually going to work on this first one to start off with. Uh, just pop that to one side. So this is the panel that I've created here to go um, on the front here, like so. So you can see there where I've got those apertures. And all I've used to do that is a little square nesting die. Now, my set are actually a stitch square, but that didn't really matter because we're not going to use the piece that's cut out. I have saved them nevertheless. I've got a little stash of uh, of the pieces that cut out. I'm sure they will come in handy for something at some point, even if I cut them down and make them into a, a sentiment piece. So I've got those in a little stash there. And what I did with my, uh, my front panel was just mark the centre here. So just with a pencil, I actually went along here. So half of six and a quarter is three and one eighth and actually worked out where the middle was going to be and then I use my ruler here which has already got the markings on for the sort of quarter half three quarters inch mark and I came in a half an inch from the edge of my card so I've lined up the edge of my card with that half inch mark on my ruler here and then all I did was center my die okay along that three and one eighth and I've die cut that centre aperture first to make sure that that was in the middle of my card. And then all I've done is moved it along and I've just left a little quarter inch gap here. Moved it along, kept the ruler to, to line it up and die cut on either side, just leaving that little quarter inch border in between. And it left me about a quarter inch. So these are nice and evenly spaced now along 
that actual piece of card there. You can see here where we've got the three apertures at the ready. And then what I did then was actually use one of my butterfly dies. And again, you could use anything in here. It could be a flower, could be a dragonfly, whatever you fancy in there. I just chose this one, which I've had in my stash a while. This is actually a crafter's companion die. And this one was, it's not quite as big as the picture on the front, but I chose that little butterfly. And I've cut that one three times just to give me some plain white butterflies. I'm just going to bring this over. So these are just smooth white cardstock that I've cut them out of and I'm going to keep them in the white to use today. And what I want to do is actually pop these into my aperture here. So I'm going to stick them in so that they're in the corners of the aperture. I'll just lay them on the front for now, but we're actually going to stick them behind here as if they're poking through uh, the design there. So let's move that one to one side. I'm going to bring in my tacky glue for this. I'm just going to use my eraser and take that little pencil mark off the middle there now that I'd finished with the measuring. And then what we're going to do is pop these in place. So I'm going to bring in my mat just to work on A so that you can see what I'm doing a bit better and B to protect my surface from that glue. So what I want to do is I'm going to pop this one in like so. And just remembering that you need to pop the glue on the front. We're so used to turning the um, the die cut pieces over. But in this instance, I actually need the glue on the front. So I'm going to pop it on my tweezers there. Take my top off and I need to put glue down this right hand side and a little tiny bit on that bottom corner there. So just on this bottom wing. Cross here and a little bit along that left hand side. And then all I'm going to do is position this underneath that window. And once I'm happy with the position, I can stick that piece down. Now, don't worry if there is any bits popping out underneath. We can trim those once the glue's dry. So that's the first one in place. We're going to do exactly the same, but I'm going to flick it to the other side this time. So I want the glue down the left hand wing and at the bottom of this one on the front again. So again, I'm just going to pop... A little bit of glue down that left side this time and just on that bottom piece there and we're going to slot this one under this edge here and again just position it where I want it to go and then press it down and let that glue adhere and then the third one I'm going to bring back to this orientation so he's going to come back at this side so again glue on the top just down that right hand side and a little tiny bit at the bottom there and he's going to pop in behind this one again here so again once I'm happy I can let go of him with the tweezers and just press that into place so we'll just make sure we've got rid of the glue off the mat there and then I'm going to leave that to dry and once it's dry I can snip out these little pieces that have popped into the uh, the next aperture so from there, we need a piece to go in the background and that's where we're going to put our inks. So I've got this next piece and this one measures just short of the six and a quarter. It's just it's probably about a six and one eighth so that it sits behind there nicely. And then all I did was measure my apertures here, which are about one and three quarter inches. So I've left a quarter inch at each side and actually came at two and a quarter inches. For this particular panel so what we're going to do is we're going to apply our three colored inks on here and just to give me a guideline to work against i'm just going to pop it over the top here and where we've got that horizontal border across the middle of the apertures i'm just going to make myself a little mark there so that i've got a guide for the inking so we're going to bring our inks in now and i'm going to start with the red one so this was the candied apple and again load up that applicator make sure my inks flow in and then i'm just going to bring this in and i'm going to just run it across level with that first mark that i made for the top third of the uh, the card here get a nice covering of ink i am going to apply some water to this as well in a second so don't worry if it's too you know if it's not too smooth so that's my first color down then we're going to move on to the yellow 
I'm just going to clean that off so that I don't contaminate the uh, the yellow ink there. So the little one is Squeeze Lemonade. This is the yellow shade. So again, load up the applicator there. And again, I'm going to use that little mark that I made to just bring that into play. And again, just saturate the card with that lovely yellow ink this time. Now, I'm not too worried about a blend between them because I want that border between the apertures to cover this bit. So again, I'm just going to go up to the red, but not over it. And again, just make sure we've got a nice covering of that ink and saturate the card. So that's the yellow one done. And then finally, we're going to bring in that lovely blue. So this one is the blueprint sketch in lieu of my prize ribbon. Just going to bring a little bit of tape in to hold my card with so that I don't lift the ink off with my fingers. And then again, we're going to come in at the bottom and apply that blue ink there. So again, I just want to bring it up to the yellow. I don't particularly want to blend it in. I just want to literally use those thirds and apply that beautiful colour. But you can see how much more vibrant these are with the dye based inks rather than the oxides. There we go. I've actually managed to transfer a little bit of the red now, but uh, we'll see if we can do that. I've got it on my finger somehow. I don't know how I manage that. But what we will do is just we'll get rid of the blue for starters and we'll clear the blue off here. And then I will see if I can just touch that up with a tiny little bit of um, because these are water reactive. I should be able to just tidy that up with a little bit of water and then dab it out there. That's good enough for me. OK, right, let's get rid of those applicators out of the way now. And then what I want to do next is just bring in some water. So I'm actually going to use my fan brush and just some water out of the, uh, the spritzer here. So I'm just going to spray those bristles and get them wet and then tap off any of the large sort of spots of water because I just want a nice fine little tiny splatter spatter across the card there it's hard to know when to stop it's like step away from the card jam that'll do and then let that do its magic. And these inks are designed to react with that water. So I'm just going to give it a minute while I actually clean up that mat, get rid of the rest of the water before we end up in more trouble. And I think we can probably get rid of the mat as well now. So you can see how this is going. It looks really cool. I just love the way that it works. Now then, I've definitely got ink. I think it's underneath the edge of there because I can see it transferring. So we're going to end up in a mess if we're not careful. All right. So let it go as long as you want it to go. Um, the longer you leave it, the more diffused it goes. But I'm just going to bring in a piece of uh, paper towel and basically just blot what's happening on there now. You can see where it's picking up a little bit of the ink. And then when we reveal, you've got that beautiful pattern going on there. And you can see where the, all that inks, where the water's pushed the ink away and created those nice little patterns. So this is going to go behind here to create that colour in the panels. So I think the next thing we'll do, it's not too damp. I only put a little bit of water on, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to stay with my um, tacky glue here and I'm going to work on the back of my panel now and I'm just going to bring some glue up either side here and along the long side on this one and then across those bridges in the middle and then I just want to make sure that the outside of the butterflies are anchored so I'm just going to put a few little dots on the body and that outside wing there to make sure that that's got a point that will be anchored when we actually pop it together. So I'm going to leave that face up like so and then I'm going to bring in my piece here 
and I'm going to pop this over the top roughly where I think it needs to go. I'm not going to push it down just yet. Turn it over and make sure now then we didn't snip the little bits. We need to do a little bit of butterfly surgery quick before it, uh, it seals. So I want to go and snip that bit. That's only a little tiny bit there and the bit at the bottom. Sorry, little butterflies. There we go. And then we can actually stick that one into place. Make sure that those uh, wings are stuck down. I'm just going to bring in my block and pop that on there for the time being. Just to give it a little bit of weight. OK, so while that's just drying off for a second, we will pop our card together and I'm going to put the mat layer on with my tape runner there and literally just apply some adhesive. And then we're going to pop this on the front of our card blank. So that one's going to go on the front of here and just leave that nice quarter of an inch border all the way around the card there. Give that a press down. And then this one we're going to pop on the top and we've just got that nice little eighth of an inch border going on around there. Now what I actually want to do is just find some uh, scrap card. I just want, in fact I can probably use a couple of those little pieces that we cut out of the window there. Because on the back of this we stuck the panel down, I've actually got a piece here that's not quite flat. So I'm going to use this, in fact I might just need another one, let's just grab another one. And I'm going to cut this down and just use it to build up that space in the middle there so that it's nice and even to stick down on the card front. And then there won't be any dipping in the middle there. So that's all I need to do. And then we'll just stick that down with the uh, tape runner there just to even it up a little bit. It doesn't matter if it's not a full section, doesn't matter if it's not cut perfect, it really is. It doesn't even have to be the white card, it could be any scrap, just to lift it and make it equal to this side here. So that'll do for me there. And then I'm going to flip over to my all-purpose glue to stick this layer down. So we want to make sure that we've got the glue all the way around the edges there. And then also in the middle so that we've got a nice good stick. And then this one with it being wet is nice and easy to just wriggle it into place. And once you're happy with that, we can give it a nice press down. So again, I'm just going to pop the block on it just to hold it flat. And then we've got a few more little embellishments left. I have got... Um, sentiment here and this is actually from my stamp set and these actually are like a, a negative stamp almost because they stamp the outline and leave the letters so this was stamped on white card with black ink and you get the white card left showing and then the black round it so if I'd have stamped this for say for example in the blue ink I'd have had the blue board around it with the white showing. So really, really nice. Find your wings and fly. I just thought that was really suitable for the card that we were making. And then I've got my little tray with my, uh, my goodies in there. And we've got some embellishments just to decorate the front of the card there. So I didn't want to put too much on the front because I want to focus on those primary colours. So I've got a little bit of tape on the back of my sentiment here. We'll take the liner off that piece and then all I'm going to do is pop this one like sort of two thirds away that we're going to go across here like I've got something stuck to that there that we go just pop it across that sort of little bridge piece there and we're going to have that just cutting across the design and then I'm going to bring my tacky glue back in and I've got some little flat back pearls that we're just going to decorate the butterfly bodies with. So I'm going to put three little dots of glue on each butterfly. And then I've had a rummage through my little box of pearls and picked out 
the ones that match the colours. So I've got three blue ones to go on the blue butterfly there. I've got three yellow ones to come along the middle. And again, just focusing on those three primary colours today. That's all I wanted to do. So we can just nudge those into place with my tool there. And then I've got the red ones to go on the top. And you've decided to flip. Thank you. And then just for a little bit of added interest, I've die cut some stars. I have a nice little wavy star die. It's actually a little edgeable this, but it cuts out just a range of sizes of stars. And I often use these as embellishments. So I've just cut some of those out of some silver matte mirror card. And I want to create the effect of that tr that butterfly trail. So we're going to go up from the bottom, through the middle and up the other side, just with the little stars. So I'm going to bring in a couple at the bottom here to start off that trail. We're going to go up through the yellow segment in the middle and then we're going to land up at the top of the card just to bring your eye through those um, those designs. So I've got a large one and a slightly smaller one at the bottom there. And I've got a large one and a slightly smaller one at the top. And I'm just going to put a couple of the smaller ones in the middle there like so. OK, so we've just got that butterfly trail as if it's bringing your eye up through that design there. And that's literally all I'm going to do. I haven't done anything on the inside of the cards today because I just wanted to focus mainly on that colour aspect, the colour theory. So if I bring in the original one, you see there's quite a vast difference there between the Distress Oxides, which are much paler, and the actual Distress inks, even though they're pretty much the same colour families, there was just a slight difference in the blue. But these are the same and these are the same, but so much more vibrant. So depending on where you're at with your colour schemes, I personally prefer the pastels, which is why my go to's are the oxides. But this looks just as nice with those lovely vibrant colours. And then just to give you a third option, I actually did one using my metallic uh, shimmer watercolours. And I've just used my little applicator, which I put the plastic over so that it's not porous any longer. So the ink sits on here. And all I've done is just sort of dab it onto the background and use those same three colours. So we've got a slightly shimmery one. We've got the oxide one and we've got the distress ink one. So let me know which one you like best. Uh, I'm still sticking with the oxides because I am a bit of a pastels girl all the way down. And then just to give you another idea with those colours, I did a little six by four note card here, just using some uh, different dies and little tag die, an embossing folder in the background, a bit of washi tape at the back, just to draw your eye along that sentiment. And then I've got some little stamp presents on there. Carried on with the star theme, but just to give you a different idea, as well as the apertures with the butterflies for using those primary colours. So I'm going to leave it at that for today. And I will be back with more videos. The next one will be talking about the secondary colours on that wheel, which will be the orange, the purple and the green, which typically you see at Halloween. But I don't think I don't think I can bring myself to make a Halloween card yet. I have got something in mind for those colours and we'll see how it goes. Uh, and I'll bring you that in the next. bit. I'm hoping to do these every week for you. Um, so, yeah, that's where I'm heading with it. So let me know which was your favourite today. And if you're interested in that colour theory and we'll have another look at these in the next tutorial so thank you for watching today thank you for joining me if you've enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up it does help the channel and if you're not subscribed yet i would appreciate that too and all i have to say for now is bye bye and see you very soon